it was a little bit different start to the adventure than I was thinking. Uh, there was a little bit of poor weather in the forecast, but we're getting a lot more snow up here on top of Soldier Summit than I was expecting. So, hopefully just no accidents. I've seen a few slide offs, nothing crazy. Just looks like people kind of going around a few corners too quickly, but for the most part, it's coming down hard enough now that people are taking it really easy. I think we're going 30 miles an hour or so, uh, which is good because speed is your enemy when you're driving in the snow. Hey, this is Jared and you are watching Backroad Exploration. Today I am so excited to be out on another adventure. I'm back in the San Rafael Swell. One of the most amazing things to me about the San Rafael Swell is despite the dozens of trips that I've done out here, I have barely scratched the surface. In fact, there's entire regions that I haven't even done any exploring in, not to mention the thousands upon thousands of trail miles that I haven't taken on. So I'm kind of in the northwest section of it. For most of my trips, I jump into the San Rafael Swell either outside of Huntington, Utah or Wellington, Utah. Today I'm in the section just outside of Farron, Utah, which is just past Huntington. And it's an area that I've never been in. So these are going to be all new trails. I'm really looking forward to checking out some remote areas and then also making my way back into some of the more popular areas, including Black Dragon Wash, which is a really popular trail that I've never done. Has some really cool pictographs and is a nice wash canyon that you drive through. Not sure if I'll make it there today or tomorrow, but we have a lot of trail miles ahead of us. It should be a really fun adventure. Let's get going. You definitely don't have to air down when you go off road. I have done a video about all the benefits of it if you want to know those, but I personally do it, especially if I'm doing an overnight trip because it just makes the ride much more comfortable. It does not have to be expensive, okay? There's all these crazy fancy setups that people will put together, spend tons of time. If you just want to build stuff, that's fine, but inexpensive def gauge, inexpensive deflator. This You can get all of this for under 20 bucks on Amazon. Super cheap, works well. In fact, these are faster than your stem pullers that you can get from like ARB or other knockoff ones. You can take them apart, you put it on each tire. By the time you make it all the way around to the first tire that you put it on, it's done. You can quickly check, make sure that the pressure's where you want it to be and move on. It's funny, I was really expecting the first part of today to be, you know, a little bit boring scenery wise, but these nice rolling hills through this upper northwest part of the swell is really cool and really pretty. Um, not really what I was expecting. I was expecting to be a lot flatter, kind of bobbing my way to where we get closer to a lot more of the mountains, but this is fantastic. Man, the first 10 miles alone of this trail has been so awesome. I'm just really, really impressed and loving this so far. It's set up the day to be really good and I've already seen like 20 trails and I'm like, oh man, I wanna know where that goes. So definitely somewhere I'm gonna be coming back to, but check this out. A little bit of water going through Coal Wash Road right here. Pretty cool.
when I was mapping out this trip, I saw in this section a little thing that said the drips that was just on the map. I was curious at what that was. I'm in this wash. It actually reminds me a ton of the Little Wild Horse Wash and that heads into Cathedral Valley. And you pull up here and water is leaking down through this desert and coming out right here. Pretty impressive. Looks like that storm I went through earlier is chasing me. Look at those clouds behind me. Looks pretty good out here in front of me. Just around every turn, this trail just keeps getting better and better. It's narrowed up a lot um, going through this wash. It's just really cool. It's not like super technical or anything, but just rough enough to kind of, you know, make you choose your tire lines a little bit, think about what you're doing. And the scenery is just incredible. Look at this. Unfortunately, the weather is kind of taking a turn for the worse, um, and I don't feel super comfortable being down inside that wash while it's raining. It's definitely been super cloudy and rainy behind me, but it's finally caught up. And flash flooding is a real issue in Utah. A few people die from it every year. While this, you know, kind of wash is quite wide, and there's some definitely some higher areas that you could get up in case of an emergency. It just seems foolish to um, kind of toy with that. So I found a trail that led up and over onto Moore's Road, which runs parallel to the wash. Unfortunately, it eventually breaks off and it doesn't connect to the rest of the Sids Mountain Wilderness, which is what I was planning on doing for the rest of this afternoon. So a um, little bit disappointed in that, but this looks like a cool trail and I'm having so much fun. So I'm not really concerned about it. This may be my new favorite way through the swell. I'm really, really liking this. So it's kind of hard to see, but my plan was to go down, you can see this blue route, um, and then head over towards Black Dragon Trail probably tomorrow, Black Dragon Wash. Um, but I've come up out of that wash now. You can see that green line is, is my new route. And I'm up here on Moore's Road. It goes down, but eventually kind of veers off in a different direction. So looks like there's definitely some cool things that I want to check out here. Um, but it isn't exactly what I was expecting. Um, but it, one thing that's nice is I have a lot more confidence veering off trail now. Um, normally I try to stick to where I'm at, but I recently picked up a spot x device um, i'll talk more about it in detail but i do enough solo travel that i just think it's a good idea to um, have some type of a satellite communication device and one of the biggest reasons that i got it is when i go solo i plan out my route and i really try to stick to it because if there's any kind of problem i want um, my brother mike and and my wife and, and who i share the track with to be able to find me and I often want to veer off the route and sometimes I have to veer off the route. So this gives me a lot of confidence that I can do so and still be able to communicate to them my current location. So I'll talk more about it in detail probably in another video, but in general, I feel pretty confident that won't be any problems um, veering off track, which normally I wouldn't do. And in this instance, I would have to do and it's much safer because I have a way to still communicate and I'll be out of that wash. I just love the desert. Uh, 
look at this, so cool. Wine's over there. We're just riding along this ridge. It goes way out in that corner over there. Incredible. I'm worried that this trail is not going to reconnect back to the road up there. So I'm going to go walk it real quick and see pretty decent rough sections right here too. Not loving this section, although a line like that looks like it would work. I just don't, the map says it goes through, but we got to start climbing here pretty quick. Right there is a problem. It's hard to tell, but this is crazy narrow. <sighs> you could do that on a dirt bike, maybe an ATV, but you're not gonna be able to fit through there in the Jeep, no way. <sighs> the the trail on the, the, the map says it goes up this mountain, but I did not see a trail that goes up that hill, so. Hard to tell, but here's a bunch of turnaround tracks. I'm not the first person that has got in here and decided to turn around and not try to fit through that. It gets really rough, but I think I could have got through all of it. Other than that, I it's way too narrow for the Jeep, which means it's probably not a real road anymore. So, see, this would have been a little rough. Never looks rough on camera, but some of these rocks are pretty good size. Oh, maybe this is my road up. Yeah. Okay. That looks freaking gnarly. But, it does look like a road up. Really, only that looks rough. That's a nice hit. I might put a couple rocks there. Let's take a look at that. These are sharp. This would be a very steep hill. Warning sign saying it's rough right here. But you don't disagree. Well, I made the difficult decision to turn around. Um, I got to some obstacles down there that were, I wanted to, mostly I just wanted to walk because I can see the road up on the hill that I'm supposed to connect to. So I thought, all right, I'll just walk them, make sure they're not gonna be too bad. So as I kept walking, it just kept getting worse. There's four pretty decent obstacles, two of which get pretty off camber and wheel placement is gonna be really important. Um, not that I think they're impossible to do, but would be hard to do without a spotter. And then I actually walked past the turn that goes up this ridge line because it's so steep. I didn't even notice that it was a trail. I walked past it, found this crazy narrow section and I thought, well, no way I can fit through there. Um, and then on my way walking back, I saw the turn that goes up this really steep hill, has a big ledge, you know, to go up with some pretty sharp rock on it. I kind of built up a platform because I thought, oh, I can drive up it and over. And uh, I do think I could do it all. Um, but without a spotter, I just think it's probably not worth the risk. And if I broke something here 
or gotten any trouble at all, it would be really difficult to get me out. So making the difficult decision to turn around, head back the way that I came. Um, it's about 4.30, so probably find a nice place to camp and then um, kind of adjust the plan from there. Ended up probably didn't need to jump out of coal wash. It never rained very hard. Um, so uh, I don't think I can camp into there. I just passed the um, turn to go back in. So I'm going to see if I can go down this a little ways, find a place to camp for the night, and then return to where I turned out earlier tomorrow morning. I've just pulled off the trail at a little place called Yellow Seep. There's clearly a spring up there that's making a bunch of the vegetation, you know, giving it this nice yellow color, which is I'm sure where it's getting its name. Um, there's some water troughs behind me that are completely rusted out. So I don't know if the spring that was coming up is completely dried out or if it just isn't that time, the right time of year for it right now. Um, but I've been able to pull off to the side next to these troughs and this will do for a campsite tonight. Um, not super ideal, but um, I haven't seen another person today since I went off road. So this has been a nice, really remote trip and I don't want to get too far away from coal wash because tomorrow I'm going to try to continue on that um, down through the Santa Fe swell. So I'm super hungry. I really didn't eat lunch. Um, just kind of snacked a little bit as I was traveling. So let's get some dinner going. Well, I'm just sitting in the back of the Jeep right now, out of the wind, um, eating dinner, and just thinking about today and just thinking how amazing the trails were today. It's crazy. I've basically done a huge uh, circle. Um, so I'm going to be starting out tomorrow, basically almost where I started today on the dirt. You know, really, I started on the dirt about 10 miles more further that way, but didn't cover nearly as much ground as I was hoping with all of the backtracking, but should be able to drop down into the wash again tomorrow and start making my way through cold wash. The sun is starting to go down, it's getting cold. I'm ready to wrap up this part of the trip. There's definitely gonna be a part two, so make sure to subscribe so that you can catch it as I finish out coal wash and do a bunch more exploring. Probably have to modify my trip just because I was supposed to be all the way through coal wash already, but I don't regret any part of today. This was such a really cool off-roading trip. This might be my favorite part of going through the swell. So I'm really looking forward to finishing this trip out. If you want to catch that, make sure to subscribe. Please like this video. And if you want to follow me on the day-to-day, -day, you can do so by heading over to Instagram at Backroad Exploration. Thanks so much for watching.